Kisov shoots it deflected right in. Peter Angelo save rebound. Stastny stopped by Peter Angelo. I don't believe that save. Neither does Peter Stastny. He can't believe the save that Peter Angelo just made on him as Frankie Sparkling. Now that maneuver there to stop and rob Peter Stastny. He should get 5 to 10 for that. Oh. Hello and welcome to episode 29 of Tendy Talk. This week I chat with Joe and Zach from Second String Leather Company. In this episode, I learn a little more about their hockey backgrounds, how they met, and where they came up with the idea to repurpose old hockey equipment into things like wallets, toiletry bags, and Apple Watch bands. So enjoy the show. Well, Joe, Zach, thanks for joining me today. It's uh, it's fun to have you guys on as the uh, creators of the Second String Leather Company. Um, I... I can't remember when I first came across your products uh, on social media, but they they intrigued me from the start. That's for sure. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, but uh, before we get into that side of things, um, I don't know how much of the podcast you've listened to, but uh, I like to get into kind of the hockey background of fo- uh, folks. So I want to know, you know, how did you two get started in hockey? I know you're from uh, Michigan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hockey is uh, pretty big out there. Uh, you know, how'd you guys get started in the sport? I can go first. Uh, I mean, growing up in Grand Rapids, uh, the west side of uh, Michigan, so hockey wasn't as big as it was Detroit, or is Detroit, but um, hockey is a big part of my life and been skating since I was three. So I uh, started playing goalie when I was probably i don't know seven or eight and been playing goalie ever since been hooked on it and you know it was it was the pads that got me hooked as probably about every other goalie out there yeah you know so uh but yeah that's that's basically my quick little background of how i came to be a goalie and love the position so and then for me goodness uh i sort of got thrown into the net by by just sort of accident and just sort of fell in love with the position and moved away when I was goodness 16 years old and played uh well you're from Minnesota obviously so I I actually played at Shattuck St. Mary's oh okay yep so Um, I played hockey there and when did you play there oh gosh this would be um 96 97 because I was I went to uh, college played college hockey in 98 so I was there with Goodness, uh, you know, the Preezies were there, yep. uh, Ben and Patrick Eves. I, I ask because uh, when I was in college, uh, I was playing JV and we would round out our schedule sometimes by scheduling games with uh, the Shattuck prep team. <laughs> that's uh, Yeah, that's who I played with. And, and uh, you know, playing at uh, Shattuck was, you know, it was all business all day long. Hockey was, it was amazing. I mean, the to see some of the players that were, you know, coming through our program at the time, it was, I mean, we had, I think on our team, we probably had well over 20 players, you know, go NCAA. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, um, from my team in particular, uh, Ryan Malone, he played, you know, a handful of years in the National Hockey League. Yep. Great guy. I mean, he was just a hoot. And I think he played at St. Cloud as well. Yep. Um, before playing for uh, Pittsburgh. But, you know, there's a couple other fellas because, um, at the time, uh, Ben Eves was our captain. So Patrick, you know, his younger brother, who just recently retired from, I believe, Anaheim. Um, so he was down, a, I think he was probably playing Bantams at the time, but his brother <laughs> was, you know, our team captain. And we just, it was awesome. It was, you know, it's a hockey factory now. And uh, it, it's, uh, it was pretty cool because uh, I'll never forget my first visit to Shattuck when I went with my dad. I walk into the, uh, uh, you know, the, the hockey office and, there stands JP Parisi. Yep. And at the time I didn't know who JP was. <laughs> and my dad's like, Holy that that's, that's JP Parisi. I mean, that, that he's in the, you know, he's icon, he's an icon in the hockey world and he's, you know, hockey hall of fame and yep. I had no idea who JP was, but by the time <laughs> I left Shattuck, I knew who JP was. He left a, a lasting impression on yeah. a lot of people in that hockey program. I, I still remember we were at their barn to play, um, and they, they came to our rink and we played them and we beat them. And then we went to their barn and just a great old school barn to play in yeah. for one, oh, yeah. but uh, we're, we're losing by like two goals. And my coach wasn't happy about that. And uh, 
at the time, the NCAA gave us $5 meal money for the ride home. And we'd usually stop at McDonald's or something. And my coach just goes, if you guys lose to a bunch of high school kids, no French fries for you on the way home. Well, one of my teammates, we uh, called him grandpa because he had had knee surgery and lost all of his speed, but he also had this monotone voice and a beard and everything. Somehow we tie up the game and then he gets a breakaway and scores and he comes to the bench just sits down without celebrating he goes nobody f's with our french fries <laughs> <laughs> and then uh but awesome. we're asking we're like you know grandpa how, how did you get a breakaway you're the slowest guy on the team he goes i don't know i think they were back checking so hard they went right past me uh, <laughs> but at, at the time they were renovating the visiting team's locker room so we didn't have showers in our locker room and oh, no. we're standing there going we need to shower before our couple hour bus ride back to Winona. Yeah. And they go, not a problem. Wait until our boys are out of the locker room and then you can come use our shower. So like, great. Well, that's, as you know, on the opposite side of the rink. Yeah. And absolutely. so we're not thinking or shy and we just start walking over to the other locker room with a towel wrapped around us, not thinking, you know, a bunch of college athletes and, there's still high school girls in the stands waiting for their boyfriends to come out. And oh, yeah. We start walking by and my coach, he quickly runs into the locker room. He goes, fellas, you need to walk over to the other locker room fully clothed. Yeah. And we're like, what? We, we don't have a problem. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, awesome. that, that, that's my uh, Shattuck story. Sadly enough, I didn't get to play in either of those games, which was probably better, which is why we won. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it was amazing to go to, I mean, from a schooling standpoint, phenomenal campus. And yep. then from a hockey uh, perspective, it was, I mean, it was everything I asked for. I mean, we played it in my years there. We played in the USHL. We played, uh, you know, the Saskatchewan League. We played in the Max AAA tournament up in Calgary. I mean, the, the places we traveled with that team, it was that team was stacked. I mean, we, we got kicked out of the, I can't remember, forget, we got kicked out of the high school league because we were scoring 10, 12 goals a game. Mm -hmm. And we were blowing out, you know, Bloomington, Jefferson, Edina, Eden Prairie. They didn't even, I mean, we were, man, my goalie partner, we would change on the fly. <laughs> and, and our head coach at the time, Brian Riley, who's at West Point now, he was our coach. Uh, that was before uh, Andy Murray came in. And um, yeah, it was just a, just an, uh, that, that was, I mean, to play on a team like that, that was, like I said, all business hockey all day. I mean, it was, it's, and now it's a hockey factory. It's a, you know, obviously one of the best in North America for producing some elite level talent in the national. Absol Absolutely. So you played there for a couple of years. Uh, did, did you play after uh, yep. Shattuck? Uh, yeah, so I went to, from there, I played uh, college hockey at SUNY Brockport, which is in New York. All right, I'm there back. I, I had some uh, Wi-Fi issues there, so I connected to my. No, that's okay. No worries. Yeah. So you so were. So we have just a whole slew of products. That, yeah. So we have our goalie helmets. We have edge protect, which is like the black rubberized skate blade protector on the post. Yes. That skate blade from hidden post. We've had that for gosh, since 04, 05. We have Piranha Peg, which is like the net pegs that, you know, obviously they've been out for a couple of years yeah. now. So I wish between that and the second first... string that I started with back, you know, a handful of years, it's, it's, it's all the time. It's busy. I wish the super rink would get those Piranha Pegs because <laughs> anytime I push off the net in my beer league games, odds are it's going off the moorings and the ref's not going to blow it dead. It's beer league. So I got to quickly pull it back onto the. Uh, back. Yeah, it, it's yeah. amazing. We we uh, we just after two and a half years, we just finally got our official uh, patent, and I mean we've sold thousands of those things. I mean they've only been out for about three years now, but we've just every day we sell pretty much all over the world with with the different products, and we have different distributors and stuff like that. And yep, 
keeps me busy. And, and now obviously with second string, it's just, it, it's gone to a whole nother level as we've, uh, we're getting, we're closing in on two years in, in May. So that would be our second year anniversary. Yeah. So I want to ask about that. So you don't just start working with leather at some point in your journey of life, you, you, you get gain this skill. You know, I, I'm thinking of for my son as we're looking at Boy Scout camp this summer and the different activities. And one of the options was leather work, you know, was it a Boy Scout camp where you first worked with leather? Or how, how did you learn how to do that? And kind of, I don't want to say fall in love, but you know, start that uh, passion. Well, it, it's, it starts with like the, so being, cause I think Zach and I met God well over 10 years ago. Yeah, it was, it, it was, he was playing high school hockey and uh, we were at the rink where we were having a bandit summer camp and we were just sort of crossing paths and I was trying to actually sell him a goalie helmet at the time. So, <laughs> so I was trying to sell him a goalie helmet and we just sort of, you know, became friends and then he ended up going to the college that I goalie coach at Davenport University. So that's where he played college hockey at. And we just sort of stayed acquaintances and friends ever since. But we've also like, you know, just trying to come up with some business ideas. And, and, and Zach has always wanted to get into the hockey industry. Yep. And so we're like, okay, well, let's start, you know, brainstorming some ideas. And then, I mean, it was like, golly, like, it's funny because over the years we sort of chuckle about it because like the first idea, which I was like, absolutely not, was hockey puck cufflinks. <laughs> so, like, you know, like cufflinks on your dress shirt. Hey. I, I've seen those on Pinterest and exactly. So it, it's somebody who wishes he got to dress up more. If I had to have cufflinks, I would go for be that. hockey pucks. Right. Well, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I don't think so. But it, it, it and it just, so I was like, we got to go back to the drawing board. So, I mean, it, it, it's sort of like, honestly, like over probably, you know, when the, that was like shot down, it was probably a couple months later. Yeah. He literally called me at night. <laughs> it had to be like two in the morning because it was, it was, I mean, I was fascinated. I'm like, man, what's he calling me for? And he's like, I got it. I, I got the idea. I'm like, what is it? So he's like, I think we should repurpose goalie equipment leather into mm -hmm. high end leather goods, like wallets and keychains and bathroom bags. And I was like, I, I mean, I like stood up, at, you know, from a dead sleep. And I'm like, that's it. That's it. I mean, it, it's just, it was unique and different. And, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, like him and I have never dealt in the leather industry. Mm -hmm. So our biggest thing was venturing off to find a, a leather craftsman and team to put together and assemble that would be able to take sort of our idea to the next level and bring it to fruition. And we probably, you know, since the idea, it probably took us over a year to design, like really come up with like, the correct individual because we had a couple of different people we met along the way but to find who we currently use who's just i mean he is incredible his team is i mean they're they're unbelievable they're they're but even from the idea like we weren't like we thought about it but we also didn't like dive in right away yeah mm -hmm. we probably waited it was probably like four or five months or something like that and we were just like you know what let's dive into it let's see what Go happens all the way in. and all of a sudden it kind of just snowballed from there. Just everything yeah. just started falling into place. So now what were you doing at two o'clock in the morning where you had this idea of repurposing? <laughs> Cause there's a sports writer up here, Patrick Royce, who always says nothing good happens after 1 AM. So, I mean, you had to have been up to no good when this idea <laughs> yeah. hit you. <laughs> I was like midweek. Yeah, I think it was probably like a Wednesday. You always night. stay up late. Like, I'm, yeah, always I'm late. always up super late. So it's just like just sitting in bed, just scrolling through Facebook, scrolling on the phone, and then just it just hit me. I was like, that's it. There it is. Yep. There so. it is. And I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, it's interesting how things sort of like come full circle because, again, with, you know, from so Dak, Zach does a lot of our photography. So from like the photography, mm -hmm. and we both do the marketing, you know, with our Facebook and Instagram posts, um, yep. you know, our website, we have, a, you know, sort of a, a hockey guy that deals with our website. So he knows the hockey industry. He knows how to sort of tie the things into our website to make it pop for hockey enthusiasts. 
And with our leather team, uh, so the gentleman that we use, I mean, he, like I said, he is literally, he's an artist. I mean, his yeah. team, they're, they're artists that bring, you know, you look at a pair of pads and then you can sort of construct them into these leather pieces that people carry uh, carry around. Yeah, they see things we can't. It, it, it's, you have a piece of hockey history in your back pocket at all times. It's a conversation piece. That's, and yeah. that's what it's really grown into is in a, it's an amazing conversation piece. And we're really getting excited because we're getting close to launching our, our newest collection, collection number eight here in the, in the coming days. So we're getting pretty excited about that. Yeah, and before I ask about that collection, I just had the thought. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Colin Delia, who's in the Hawks organization, who everybody thought yeah. was going to be their starter this year, he is into making fine leather goods, and he makes yes, he leather wallets. Has there been thought of a collaboration with him? No, we actually – well, so we have, like, sort of a mutual friend, Chris Joswiak, who is with Brian's, and mm -hmm. I believe he wears – Brian's equipment stuff. Yes, he's mistaken. got some pretty sweet looking pads. Yeah, he always has a really good setup. So I, I, we like, I don't know if we cross paths early on or, or what it may be, but you know, obviously he's, you know, professional athlete. And, yeah. You know, for, for us, we're, we're like 24 seven with this thing. We're, we're diving in every day with, you know, doing multiple social media posts, answering emails, working on new collection ideas, buying new pieces, meeting with people to get pieces. It's just, uh, it, for us, it's a full-time job, you know, like, so yeah. we got some, from a collaboration standpoint, we got some really cool things in the work that we're working with um, uh, some NHL teams and some other uh, private label stuff. So we're pretty excited to see what 2021 brings us for yeah, next well, couple you, months. Your last collection had the cool Darren Pang pieces and the Trevor yes. Kidd pieces with the um, uh, Carolina Hurricane pads, which actually a kid I went to college with, um, he didn't play on the team. Uh, oh, nice. He, he played um, intramurals, but he, he knew the uh, Carolina Hurricanes equipment manager and had a pair okay. of Trevor Kids uh, pads. So the, yeah, th those are really cool pads, but those, those are great pieces in that collection. I'm seeing from some of the teasers for the next collection, there might be some uh, Ray Emery pieces in there. Are there yeah. any other really cool pieces we should be keeping an eye out for? Uh I, I think we're gonna we're gonna probably have there's probably about another three or four more pro glove and blockers, and we have a, we're definitely expanding our our glove like our player glove line. That was yep. another big thing that we got into was the player side. Of, there yep. we go. I, so, I got I got my uh, armadillo wallet so here. So that was sort of our that was sort of our like taking it a step further with not just goalie equipment but expanding it into player line, and that's and being that the player gloves has so much limited leather and mm -hmm. those things sell out. And, that, and that's been the, the crazy part. I think over, over Christmas, we made a thousand, like over a thousand pieces mm -hmm. for Christmas when we had our Christmas launch and we are down to, because we're running our last sale here to clear everything out before the new collection comes out. We have two wallets left, <laughs> which is just, I mean, sold out of bathroom bags, sold out of keychains, our watch bands. I have never two been. wallets right here. <laughs> 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 love it love it so it, it, it's amazing because we have some people i know word of a lie they'll have seven or eight wallets and they're like yeah, yeah. i just switch it out every couple of days i i switch out the wallets because it's it's a conversation piece or they may be you know their favorite color or, or team or goalie so yeah. we really try to work hard to like trying to find like different um like nhl teams or just different goalies but you know we're really into like the colorways and the, co the colors and trying yep. new leathers and new stitching colors because it just draws people in or it's like oh i like maroon with gold stitching i'm gonna buy that or buy that for my my brother or buy yep. that for my you know other my hockey buddy well, I, like uh, ladies that have their uh purses their shoes yeah. it's like okay what do guys have i mean yeah you can go have a couple sports cars but those are a little a little expensive but like a wallet or um anything that we have it's guys that can have multiple wallets to go out. Absolutely. Well, let's not discount our female hockey players. I mean, they could get some of their wallets to match their Absolutely. outfits too. Yeah, um, but it's actually funny you mentioned that. So we actually have a, a piece from a, uh, a female, actually a professional goalie, because uh, she plays in the, the professional women's hockey league. So we got a piece from her time at Miramac, I believe. And we're gonna be showing that piece here in the next couple of days. It's got shamrocks on it. So it's actually like sort of fitting that it's got, yeah. you know, obviously today's St. Patrick's Day and 
Yeah. It's got shamrock pieces, on, you know, shamrock uh, logos on it. Yeah. Um, and we have a, a couple other pieces for, um, like, we just have a, uh, like, another piece for, uh, like, Jimmy Howard's breast cancer awareness blocker. We have that as well. So that's going to be coming out in a future collection. So we, we got some unique things that we're always trying to dabble in to try to, you know, sort of like keep people interested in coming back to our social media or coming yep. back to our website. Cause we get, honestly, we get probably 600 to a thousand people to our website a day mm -hmm. and we're just two years old. So for us, that's a lot of people that are just, you know, there to buy leather goods or take a, you know, browse through yep. our website. As a digital marketing analyst who focuses on web traffic, that's pretty mm -hmm. good. <laughs> yeah, it truly is. And it just keeps growing. And, you know, we started off with a social media page like Facebook, Instagram, and yep. between the two, you know, between Facebook and Instagram, we got, you know, 25,000 people, almost pushing 30,000 people. We have our, our email list. So when we push stuff out there, it just, it spreads and it just keeps growing every day. It's well, truly, it's been a truly remarkable ride the last two years. That's how I first found you guys was on Instagram. And I'm seeing these pieces. I'm thinking those are really cool. Um, and, you know, we're not going to beat around the bush. The price isn't like going to Marshall's and picking up a full, web, full leather wallet. Th this is yeah. a little spendier, but you're getting quality pieces that are going to last. Uh, and I was a little skeptical. I, I didn't know... Uh, if I should invest or not. And then I saw you guys at the Let's Play Hockey Expo. Um, yeah, absolutely. Literally days before the world shut down. Um, yeah, a year ago. Um, I, I remember it because I, I take my son every year. Uh, in fact, I, I've got uh, pictures of him trying on goalie equipment from the time he was three till he's about to turn 13. Um, oh, no. So it's like, I, I almost feel like I need to take them to a pro shop just to try on equipment to get that yearly mm -hmm. photo of them. Um, but, you know, we, we went to the expo and then we, like Monday, school was canceled, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but it was I, I, it's, it's funny you said it because I think that was one of the last major, had to be one of the last major events. Yeah. There, there was over 100,000 people there that weekend. I mean, that, oh, easy. <laughs> And there, it, that had to be one of the largest and probably one of the last events in the United States, at least. Yep. And then literally a, a day or two later, we got back from Minnesota. We drove back and like literally a day or two later, it's like, wait, what's going on? Like everything got canceled and we sat yeah. at home for four months. Yeah, because it was Tuesday night. I was playing in my uh, beer league over at the Badness uh, Sports Center. And there's a mm -hmm. bar next to it, which has two for ones after that hour <laughs> of the night. And so after the game... Uh, you know, we would usually go get our two beers and then head home. And we were seeing that the NBA had shut down. The Hawks and yeah. Sharks were still playing, but it had been decided that was going to be the last game. And kind of looked at each other and we're like, let's go with another round, fellas. This might be the last yeah, one for a while. Time we've been in here for right? a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, but and I, honestly, like, that's one thing that we missed this year was that show. Like, we were really looking forward to it. We had, I mean, we had some major exposure. I mean, we, we, uh, like the Minnesota Wild, their their marketing team, they came and talked to us about doing some stuff. And your uh, booth was awesome your, too. Your, some of the equipment you had, some even though it was a Red Wings mask, you had the old Jim Rutherford mask there. Um, yeah, know. we had some pretty. We, I, that's the one thing that, and it's it's funny you say that because like we get all these pieces, but some of them end up in our collections. Like we have, you know, just yeah. we have like mannequin with all dressed up in our in our uh, in our shop and we got goalie pads lining up our our workstation up top and so we have like pieces that we acquire that we just keep for our own little museum i guess you could say so we don't you know, obviously uh turn everything that we find into collection pieces but um yeah that show was awesome like we really were disappointed when they uh they obviously didn't have it this year so hopefully if you know fingers crossed that we can get back there next year because we met we met some great people and it was just minneapolis is an awesome town and Mm -hmm. Obviously, that show and that you know that tournament is just electric. It's awesome. It's it's truly yeah, the, a special weekend. The high school season they're they're going through uh, sections right now. We're still going to have a state tournament. It's just really? not going to be what we normally have for a state of tournament. Um, of course. So you know, it, at least they're trying to get the kids out there and crown mm -hmm. a champion. Um, but no, yeah, are they, still, are they, is that going to be probably another couple weeks? Is that, have they decided like when they, 
like when the big tournament would start, obviously there probably would be limited fans, but I mean, is that still a couple of weeks away? Yeah. So I know on the girls side, they've started section play uh, because mm-hmm. good friends of ours, their daughters uh, play in high school this year. And they just started section play. I don't know. The boys are usually a week or two behind. Uh, mm-hmm. I haven't heard if they're going to play at the XL energy center, if they're going to move it to a smaller venue, I would assume a smaller venue considering yeah. they don't need uh uh, like all the seats, the no capacity, need you know, I, I would probably think maybe a Mariucci arena or something so they can still get the TV trucks and stuff in there. Uh, that, that would make sense because I mean, as you guys know, it, it's uh, network TV for those. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> those yeah. couple of days. Uh, in fact, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine was in town for uh, his son's hockey tournament and it was going on. It was here. Gary Thorne was here announcing oh, nice. the games with, uh, Lou and Annie always does the color commentary, but he calls me up. He goes, am I watching high school hockey on network TV with Gary Thorne calling games and Lou Nanny as color? I go, yeah, but Gary Thorne doesn't do this every year. It was just on his bucket list. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's incredible. That's so cool. Yeah. But he's I like, mean, that's amazing that he's coming back. I think with the SPN, they're going to have him. I so. hope so. I, that's going to be just amazing. I mean, that's, that's a big, that's a big feather in the cap for the NHL to get, you know, back in the, you know, yeah. ESP, you're in their news cycle and they're, you know, the biggest news cycle in, you know, yeah. sports. It's it, help exactly. Out for sure. Exactly. Um, but to get back on topic. So I see you guys at the let's play hockey expo. I look at the stuff and I'm going, I need one of these wallets. And then it was, I think sometime in the fall, you guys posted a picture of some seventies era, brown leather cooper armadillo gloves and i go i've got a pair of those in the garage and i send you guys a picture and we start conversing and next thing i know i'm sending you guys my gloves and you guys send me this awesome brian's air pack um wallet it was a nice little exchange um and i'm going okay this is great and that then when you guys finally released the uh stuff around christmas i see the one wallet and it had the armadillo thumb and i'm going (laughs) <laughs> I, I, now I need to buy that wallet because it was yeah. like that itself was the glove. And um, I love this wallet. It's great. It's holding up fantastic, but this one I love even more because it's so small. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and it's funny that you say, cause everyone's different, you know, and that's yeah. the one thing that we're always looking into is like, you know, adding different wallets, you know, and, and people nowadays, they don't really carry money. It's more credit cards it's yeah. or debit cards and anything. And so we try to accommodate different pieces and are always coming up with uh, new and unique uh, things to sort of add to our line. Cause you know, a year ago, you know, we added, you know, we just recently added candles. Well, like who would have thought that we would have sold over a hundred candles and in, yep. in a couple of months. And it's just, it's stuff like that, that we're always trying to add, you know, above and beyond the wallet leather, yeah. I guess, uh, accessory, like trying to add, like we have blankets and pillows and yeah, the, the pillows are great too. Line. Um, so I, I love the pillow with the, the Osgood, you know, blueprint on there. Um, yeah. Again, even though he was a Red Wing and a blue, because I'm a Hawks fan, is like, yeah, absolutely. I, I still wore one of those helmets in college for a while. But it had the, mm-hmm. I played in the era where we couldn't have the uh, cat eye in college yet. So it was the Hasha cage on the helmet yeah, at the time. But God, those, those are great helmets. Not very safe, but they were great. <laughs> <laughs> they look good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I had to transition out of it after another concussion. The coaches and parents came to me and they're like, time to go back to a mask, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's just, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Cause we have, you know, with our goalie helmet company, Mass Marvel, you know, we've been around since 05 with the mm-hmm. goalie masks and just the paint jobs and like, and even the material has changed and yeah. the foam has changed and how things sort of uh, evolve over time. And again, you know, right now concussions are such a big, you know, it's the hot topic in sports, with yeah. not just hockey, but football and, uh, you know, even lacrosse is becoming another, uh, you know, big sport with, with concussions and even baseball, you know, for mm-hmm. that matter. Yeah. And, you know, they're just, you know, for, to see how that's evolved into different materials being used and, but it's always amazing. Like the one thing that, that I love is, you know, you give a, you know, goalie their helmet and they pull it out of the mask bag for the first time. It's yes. got like a whether it's, it's custom painted or it's maybe just, you know, a solid color with maybe a powder coated cage. Yep. It just, they just, their eyes light up like, wow, that is like, I've yes. been waiting for this. This is amazing. It's like a kid in a candy store. I mean, they're just blown away by, especially if it's painted, like if it's custom painted, they're just 
I mean, I've, I've had goalies like cry. I've had parents cry. I mean, I've had, yeah. I mean, they get emotional because, you know, I, I had one like, around Christmas time, to be honest with you. He saved up all summer long and all fall to pay for his custom paint job. Yep. I mean, that was like his hard earned money. And the parents were like, if you want it, guess what? You're going to have to work for it. And I was like, showing them what the value of a dollar is. That's both masks behind me. That that was, you know, shoveling snow and, yeah. you know, whatever else I could do. In fact, the high school one, I, <laughs> I worked at a uh, liquor store as a stock boy for cash only because it was somewhat illegal for me to be working there at the time. But, we, <laughs> you know, the, ways. Yeah, that's all right. the owners were the parents of a teammate of mine. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it worked out. Um, but in fact, I think you and I maybe met at a previous Let's Play Hockey Expo when we were talking masks and piranha pegs right. at, at the at the Bryans in Carroll Gold. Yeah, Day. well, a year prior to last year, I was there. So yeah. with our goalie school, we're really tied in with Bryans. I think they were right behind us. Yeah. We were by Piranis and uh, Bryans, and then we were sort of like right next to Bryans. And yes. the amount of foot traffic was, was awesome that year. But even last year, I mean, we were like, in a oh, great, you guys so had a we're, great we're spot. The guys. We're in a great spot, and we're close to our. Like, so we're close with the guys from Howie's Hockey. Yep, they're a Grand Rapids, Michigan-based company. So we're close with them, and we're all in that little area. And I mean, just the foot traffic alone was was phenomenal. It was it was really a cool event. So yeah, again, I just, I want to do that event so bad oh, again. Yeah. That was that was a fun event last year. You know, it's funny. I've talked to some people about the Let's Play Hockey Expo. And when I first started taking my boy and my nephews when they were still young enough to want to go and hang out with me, uh, <laughs> um, you know, like Bauer had the whole back end and it was like this yeah. roped off area. CCM was there. Easton Hockey was still around. They had these great big footprints. And it was really cool because they had all these giveaways and things to do. And none of them are there anymore. Bauer bowed out when they opened up their Bauer store. And Bauer stores. Um, you know, because they're going, we have a store, why, you know, which is an awesome experience. Why do we need? Um, and at first, you know, some people are going, oh, it, it, it's kind of a bummer that they're not there anymore. Uh, but what I noticed is we started spending more time at the smaller booths mm -hmm. like yours like how yeah, you start talking to people and getting to know yeah them. and you know as i reflect back on it i i almost appreciate that the big dogs aren't there anymore because we know about their products we of we course. can go to pure hockey and check them out but you know i can't go to pure hockey and pick up a second string uh wallet or mm -hmm. even one of the helmets or the piranha pegs but i can at the let's play hockey expo um, yeah they have some really cool vendors when you walk around you get to see just a lot of, I mean, even some, you know, even some handmade, like uh, the one thing that I was blown away with was like, there's a lot of like handmade wood signs that, you know, like yes. vintage style signs. And obviously being in Minnesota, it's, you know, the, there's a lot of hit hockey history there just in general. So, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, the signs were like vintage and old and weathered and like, yeah. just so cool. I mean, it's stuff that you just don't see, at, you know, every day at, when you go to like a local mall, these right. are all hand, handcrafted, uh, unique pieces and, there's all, you know, all the different vendors are there from like, there's a couple of different, which I thought was cool too. Like, you know, different goalie schools were there. Mm -hmm. uh, Shattuck St. Mary's was there. I think they had like, I think Beauty Status was there. Yeah. Yep. And so we ended up, you know, becoming, cause I think they're from Minnesota actually. Yeah. Uh, so we ended up, you know, becoming friends with the owner and stuff, just chit chatting back and forth. So you, you meet a lot of people in the hockey industry that you just sort of, you, you know, you look forward to seeing uh, every year when you go back to the show. So. Yep. You know, just, I'm, I'm just disappointed that the yeah, show, it's, it's, um, it's, hopefully it happens next year. Really trust me, you're, you're not the only one disappointed that it's not going on. I think every vendor that goes and every um, hockey fan that goes is disappointed, but everybody's kind of going, we get it. You know, we, we really Especially looked out last year and got it in. And um, the cynic in me kind of go, knowing how Minnesota politics work, but understands that hockey is king in the state. I almost oh, yeah. feel like if that wasn't state tournament weekend, they probably would have shut the state down earlier. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> I, I, I've, uh, I've thought about that one before. Um, you know, and, uh, as I look at these products, you know, they're top notch, as I said, they're, it's fine craftsmanship at its finest. What have you uh, been surprised 
in learning how this stuff goes together? What surprised you the most about the whole process and that, you know, the average wallet owner wouldn't even think goes into making a wallet? Probably uh, it's the amount of time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the time that goes into it and like breaking the pads down, you know, from, you know, like pad and breaking it down to getting it to flat leather. It's like the material that they used in the eighties, even seventies and mm -hmm. all the way up to now nineties, two thousands, like it's night and day different. Oh, and man, it's absolutely. just like incredible. Like mm -hmm. Just tearing them apart is seeing how they were built back then. It's like taking whatever you can, throwing it in, hey, <laughs> throwing it in there. It's just like, what is this from a couch? Or what is this? I saw that stuff from the fifties and sixties. They looked like a, like they. I know it's obviously like deer hair, but it looked. There's some pieces like they they. I think that might be a piece like some paper, like yeah. legit, like newspaper, right. like stuffed in there. I I don't you know. It's just. Uh, it's amazing when you really tear into the pad and even what's really cool is that on the inside of the pad, there's actually markings. Yeah. So whether it's, you know, dye somebody's signature, like, oh, that's hey, cool. you know, this signed off. it's going to the next station, you know, that's some cool. So cool. there's even like been some dates on the inside. Like, I don't know, like we did, uh, we have a, you know, a recent pair of John Brown pads. So it, which was cool because these pads and there's actually a glove and blocker that go along with them that were purchased from, um, I think it's a Gunzo Sports. Oh, Gunzo's. I loved that shit. That's right. Actually, got some it, equipment. It, I, no, it's actually, I'm, I'm sorry. It's not from Gunzo's. It's actually from uh, Cosby's. Okay. Cosby's in New York. Sorry. I've heard so of them. Uh, we have a pair of player gloves from Gunzo's. Yes. Player I, gloves. So yeah. we have a pair of player gloves from Gunzo's, but with these uh, glove and blocker and pads, there's a pair of Vaughn glove and blocker that will be out in this collection and a pair of John Brown pads. But they all came from the, the, the Cosby, or I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's out of New York. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman um, that we purchased them from, he said that he wore them and purchased them. And I think he wore them up to like just a couple of years ago, but they're from 1984. Okay. And so on the inside of the pads, they were actually signed off. There was like a piece on the inside that was actually signed off by, again, a, a worker on the line or yep. somebody just giving the initials to him like, you know, it's got a little bit of an like internal history that no one would ever yeah. see unless it's, you know, deconstructed and, and you sort of see that stuff. It's like when people renovate a home and see, you know, the oh, stuff yeah. written on the two by fours and, you know, how some of the carpenters will sign their stuff on the backside. Absolutely. Um, but you, you mentioned Gunzo's. That, that was a shop that uh, grown up. In, yeah. Growing up in Chicago in the era I did, um, it was before Jerry's really took off and Hockey Unlimited was a big one on the south side. We would have to travel to the north side to go to Gunzo's and uh, get some equipment. I, yeah, because our, our last collection at Christmas had the uh, Gunzo piece that was just awesome. It came yeah. out amazing. We had like the maroon leather. It was it was really, really sharp. It, it came out really nice. I, I almost went for that one over the armadillo glove. The only reason <laughs> I went for this is because it was from the gloves I sent in. <laughs> well, you, you might just have to wait in a couple of weeks. You might have to get another one from that uh, the, the new player glove set. Yeah. Was, do is like you know when you're deconstructing them even the newer stuff um you know if it's like red and white you know mm -hmm. uh we sometimes find like gold uh yeah. gold material in there just, or like a turquoise or, or whatever that may be like totally not even the same color that yep. was constructed on the inside so it's like whatever it was to build it it's just I think yeah. it was great. Yeah, we had like a Jimmy Howard pair. It was, of yeah, it was Jimmy Howard, and it had gold on the inside. <laughs> it was weird. I mean, maybe like you'll never see it, right? So yeah, it was on the inside and a piece that they they sewn down to the the. I think it was on the blocker, maybe. Just in a weird spot, we're like, wait, this is actually from the inside of this blocker. It, it makes you wonder if that was intentional. Uh, yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's, right? it's truly unique. And then like with, with and how these uh, you know with how these goalies are especially in the national hockey league they're they're so specific about certain things mm -hmm. that's been the other cool part is to see like some of the modifications that they do to the equipment yep. in order to get it to their you know just right and again it's just you know like each piece of these you know pieces of the equipment have like a story behind them and that's sort of the the uniqueness of it is that we try to pass that story or pass that piece onto the next person that just enjoys that that individual or that piece of leather good. 
Well, and I, I think the fun part about that too is it's not just the pieces you guys procure. People can send their own pieces yep, in absolutely. to have turned into. And I, you know, I, I mentioned uh, Darren Pang did that um, to get some of his own stuff. And over the holidays, I saw you guys had uh, post some pictures of other folks that did that. Uh, in fact, I've got a pair of Vaughn Legacies I've been wearing since 1999, where when I finally oh, wow. replace them, I'm considering, do I uh, just keep them? Do I get them turned into, you know, some keepsake pieces from you guys or what? Uh, but, but that's a cool option that you, you offer people now too, is they can send their, their goal equipment, their player gloves, they can send them. I, I'm sure even if somebody had the old 1970s super thin shoulder pads you could find a way to oh, make them yeah, we have we have a <laughs> we have about 10 or 12 pieces right now in the queue for custom orders that are there's gonna be some awesome pieces uh, we're excited to show those off here now that we just got the new uh collection stuff all done we're now focusing on the uh the uh custom pieces and there's some really really nice, both player and goalie so that you'll see those in the next couple of weeks coming out but they're they're really really sharp it's, and to do those at christmas so the ones that you saw at christmas time those were like pieces that were given as Christmas presents yep. that people were like, I mean, we had a couple of people that, I, you know, Hey, I gave this to my dad, you know, these were his, you know, th these were his glove and blocker that he wore during high school in the seventies. Yeah. And he's like, I started to cry at Christmas and he, you know, he's 70 some years old and he <laughs> started to break down in front of everybody. And it's that, that's just been the uniqueness of these pieces is the, especially the custom pieces that, that do have really significant value to sentimental value to somebody is it's priceless. It truly is. And we didn't think about that with this whole thing either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, even with uh, pieces like you've got the Jimmy Howard collection where you've had a few pieces come out. I mean, there's a guy that uh, th that's going to be sentimental for some of the fans too, that really like, Oh yeah. Now that he's retired. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah um not to mention i'm sure he might want, <laughs> want to buy a few of those pieces well uh, we actually that was the and i this was early on this is probably well over a year ago we actually did um we did some pieces for vaughn for jimmy for his uh 500th uh nhl game oh cool so they took his glove and blocker and they were actually going to get him like i think uh bronzed and they were having some issues with the material and so they ended up contacting us over an hour. I mean, it's, it's been a while. So, but they, uh, they contacted us and we made the glove and blocker into, God, there had to be about 10 pieces or so. And they sewn up some nice 500 game patches and we included those on the actual products. So it was, he knocked it out of the park. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, it was really nice. It came out really nice. If you go to our webpage and go to the, uh, the custom program gallery, you'll see it up at the top. It was it's really nice. It, it, they came out really nice for, uh, for him and his family. Yeah. It, it's definitely, uh, worth checking out. I, I think for people that want that, that keepsake, you know, what, whether it be a piece of equipment you are wearing, you know, when you want a championship or like you said, dad's equipment from, uh, back in the old high school or college days or something, mm -hmm. it, it's a great way to, uh, you know, provide them something, or, you know, even if, if you're sending in a blocker or pads, you're going to be able to get more than one piece out of it. So it's not just for dad. It could be for dad and the kids or the grandkids too. Now, now we're actually doing a, like a piece right now for a gentleman. He played college hockey out in New York and he played NCAA D1 hockey and he's got three kids. So he's doing some unique stuff for his family and uh, just like keychain. You know, it, it's something that, you know, they'll obviously have as they, you know, you know, as they move forward into, you know, becoming a, you know, a young adult, they have, obviously a keychain from dad's pads when he was yep. in college. It's, you know, it's, again, it's got some type of connection to the family, which is, which is truly special. Yeah. I, I think it's pretty cool. Um, so you get all these cool pieces. How do you guys go about finding them? You know, I, I know there's different Facebook groups and this and that. I mean, is it just constantly scouring the internet to see what's out there? Always. We're <laughs> always scouring. You know, it, it's, it, it's, but that's the joy of it. That's the hunt, right? You know, it's, yep. you know, I, we sort of branched out more than just uh, like, you know, Facebook or Instagram with people like contacting us now to, to, you know, inquire about, Hey, would you want to buy these pieces or that? And, yep. you know, we've, we've, uh, we've, we've got people that sort of help us out that are <laughs> throughout North America that are always scouring and looking and, 
and sending us leads as well. So it's sort of a team effort, but that's sort of the fun part about it is just the hunt. I mean, yeah. it's sort of the, the cool part. So, and it, we, we have a lot of pieces that, you know, people may not, like we've already purchased or we've gotten in trade or whatever it may be. And we have a whole, like literally a storage unit full of stuff that, that we, it, it, you know, we may have it now and it may take a year to actually come out. So it's, it's always like a, a process to get it from when we acquire it yeah. to manufacture it and get it out there to the public. It, it could take over a year to do just, we almost like we pick and choose like how we want to do our collection. So, yeah. And we, I mean, we don't take anything and everything either. True. Right. You know? So we, we're looking for the colorways, the um, manufacturer of the pad or the designs or whatever that may be. So, or even, you know, like whatever's going on, like St. Patrick's Day, like ended up getting some uh, shamrock. shamrock ones, you yep. know? So that was like, oh, perfect. Let's throw those in. It's perfect timing. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you guys first came out with your stuff, I, I think a lot of goalies off the bat were like, this is really cool, but there's a small segment out there that doesn't think what you're doing is cool because th for whatever reason, they think um, goalie pads should stay intact, whether or not they're safe enough to wear. And they feel that if you can't wear them, they should be on a shelf somewhere where nobody can see them. I'm not one of those people, obviously, as I've got a few wallets. Um, <laughs> You know, what, what's been the feeling towards those people? And, you know, I'm guessing you've been, had a chance to maybe even meet some of them at the Let's Play Hockey yep. Expo to maybe convert them. You know, what's, what's kind of been the, the discussion there? You know, it's, I guess you, you're not going to please everybody. Of course. That's, and right. I, yeah. I, I think we sort of stayed true to our, like, our belief of how we're, you know, manufacturing these pieces, having unique pieces, and always sort of like, I mean, like, honestly, we pride ourselves on, quality and craftsmanship so hopefully like our pieces speak for themselves when someone picks them up for the first time at a show or actually gets it in the mail um and and that's sort of like been the truly amazing part is people are buying these it's not like we have a store we right. have an online store so people are trusting us with our website that these pieces that we're showing are like high of the, the highest quality and we, and when they get them, they're like, like you said, they're, they're, they're like blown away because mm -hmm. of the quality and craftsmanship and the hours of meticulous work that goes into, you know, manufacturing each piece. And these are one of one. So that's the sort of the uniqueness of behind is that, you know, no two pieces are the same, but that's also how we've, I think, grown as a company is that, I mean, we've sold over 12,000 pieces in two years. So for us to like keep branching out and having people see the quality and craftsmanship this isn't something that, like you said, ah, I'm gonna go find this at Marshall's. You know, this is something that is truly one of one, does have a story behind it. And is, is it gonna make, you know, is everyone gonna like what we're doing? No, but at the same time, that hasn't really sidetracked us for us to like, you know, continue to grow, continue to push forward and, and just keep us, you know, sort of just keep on doing what we do and that's making high-end leather goods. Well, that's yeah. That too, is like they look amazing in the photos online and on our social medias, but like once you actually get it in your hands, like you feel the material, how, uh, how high quality the leather is that we use like Corween leather. That's one of the biggest names in leather in yeah. North America, probably. Um, we've been using a lot of that and it's incredible leather. So uh, once you get it in your hands, it's like, holy crap and then you see the craftsmanship you know the detail into it it's like these aren't pieces just thrown together and like no, all right you have to do this do this do that you know it's everything's laid out specific for each wallet right so. you're not just uh cutting up old equipment to, to get it out there you're really turning it into keepsakes um yes, of course and and that's the the cool part is you know you know, way in the beginning in our first collection, we actually had a pair of goalie pads that we got from an older lady that her, her husband passed away and they were sitting in her basement for say, I golly, say 20 some years. Mm -hmm. And she was moving and the, the neighbor was like, cause I think she was actually just going to throw out the equipment. And the neighbor was, he purchased one of our wallets and just happened to see the equipment outside and just, you know, one thing led to another. And he said, Hey, I, there's a company that would actually maybe 
buy these from you. And then come to find out that those pads were her husband's and she kept them because of the fact that she'd always go to men's league and watch him play. And, and it was like, a, he was a hockey enthusiast, hockey fan. And I'm not quite sure. I, I don't know if they came from somewhere out East, like New Jersey or and so he was, you know, he was a big hockey fan and, and all she wanted was a piece uh, like she's like, all I want from these pads is something that I can just put on my nightstand that reminds me of my husband and my time, like watching him play the sport he loved. And I was like, I mean, like, dude, that just stops you in your tracks. Like no yeah. matter who you are, like then, and those are the, that's the type of pieces we're now making is like these sentimental pieces that do yeah. have major, you know, sentimental value that when we started this, you know, not just when we started and we, we first launched two years ago, but even when the first concept of the idea came, you know, at, at 2 a.m., it was never a thought. <laughs> like, never it, a thought. Uh, it's a cool idea, but it's like the touching moments that you get out of people. And we've had, uh, like, we had the one, so the, this was about a year and a half ago, uh, right when we first came out, you know, we came out in May. And in the summertime, like, uh, you know, this gentleman bought uh, a wallet and a keychain for his son for high school graduation. And he gave it to his son as like, this is your first like man wallet. This is your first adult wallet. Yeah. And these are, this is the keychain that we're going to give you for your new car for college. And I was like, wow. Like, like, and we were a part of that, you know, our, our, like that was our company, like being able to provide those leather goods to have like that story with, you know, him and his son. I'm like, that yep. is incredible. But, you know, going back to, are we going to make everyone happy for what we're doing? No, but has it stopped us for what we're doing? No, I mean, and it's not going to stop us. And people clearly means. like what you're doing too. And, you know, as, as <laughs> I say that every day, I mean, for, you know, for every person that hates us, we're going to have, you know, 20 people that buy our stuff that day. I mean, it's yeah. just, you it know, is really incredible. My argument too has been, you know, I'm never going to have the money laying around where I'm going to say, hey, I want to go buy a pair of Jimmy Howard game use pads to throw on the, you know, mantle or Trevor kid pads, but I'm going to have the money to, you know, buy a wallet with a piece of game use NHL history yeah. right there. So, you know, I, I've argued what you guys have done is given the average fan the opportunity to have that game use piece and carry it around with them. And, you know, when they're at the bar, it's that, that talking point, you know, and I, I was in North Carolina last week and I pulled this out and showed it to my dad. I said, that logo looked familiar to you. And he goes, that looks like those gloves we used to have in the basement. And I said, it's because it's from those, you know, um, you know, so the, there, there's that side of it too, that um, I, I think just some of those old crotchety uh, <laughs> and I, I don't want to pick on any of my listeners, but I think sometimes they just think that uh, of course and that, things that's, uh, are, are going to be, we've, and we've actually, can, and I'll be honest with you, like for, I, I know for a fact, like some of those people that, you know, they'll say stuff online, they have our wallet. <laughs> and I yep. know it for a fact because we've had emails like, hey, I've said this about you guys online, but then I've actually gotten the wallet and I bought it. I caved in and I purchased it. And he's like, I'm going to buy another one. I'm going to buy yep. one for my brother. I'm going to buy one for my, you know, for my son or my neighbor who's a hockey fan. It's, you know, so again, we're not going to make everybody happy, but, you know, second string leather company is not going away. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't know. I think there's something in the water in Michigan too, because there's another company that takes old fire hoses and turns them into wallets yes. and belts. But I'm wearing yes. one of the belts right now. <laughs> yeah, my neighbor, my neighbor actually, who's a fireman, he actually has, uh, I think, one of their bags or he. They, yeah. They have like uh, bathroom bags. I, but yeah, they take the old leather ho or the old uh, hoses. I think you know, like in Highland, like I think they're like nylon or. Yeah, they're they're heavy duty. The only. I, my wife got one for me for Christmas because my dad was a Chicago fireman and they were able to, they have a bunch of Chicago fire hose. Now what they've done since she got that uh, belt is they know what engine companies the hoses come from. So they, yeah. say, you know, my dad was on engine company 93. I could get a, ho a belt from engine company 93's hoses. Oh, that's very I don't cool. know. I don't know what engine company my current belt came from, but they they've done that now, but it's, it's kind of like what you guys are doing. Hey, this is a pair of pads from so and so. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the story behind the piece a little bit, which is really Absolutely. cool. Um, I want to be mindful of time because we've been talking for a while. One of the things I do with every podcast is I have a set of ten rapid fire questions I close out with. 
Mm -hmm. So since we got two of you, I want to make sure we get to them. Okay. Uh, and the first question is, uh, what's the craziest coaching moment from your playing days? And uh, it could have been something your coach did, an opposing coach uh, did, uh, but uh, craziest coaching moment. I, I got one. I mean, it is, so this, you know, because I coach college. Yep. And uh, so I, I don't even remember the team that we were playing and we were blowing them out. And this was in at our home rink. And I, there was like this noise going on, you know, to our left. So everyone turns and looks and the head coach grabbed all the sticks out of their like stick rack and yep. was throwing them on the ice, like throwing them. And the tough part is that the referee was standing by the bench. He was throwing them over the referee and the, their equipment manager was trying to like hold them back with the, with like stopping from throwing the sticks. And, and the referee was just irate. He like kicked the coach out, but the kicker was that all the sticks that were on the ice, he wouldn't let the players have. <laughs> he wouldn't give them back to the player. He was so upset that this guy would actually throw sticks at him. He told the bench, he's like, for all those sticks that your coach just threw on the ice, I'm putting them over there. You guys can't have them anymore. I was like, no way. I was like, what? It's like yeah. that Saturday Night Live skit. Oh, mine now. I needed this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. He, he took them all, put them over on his side. He's like, you guys cannot grab them. And he kicked the coach. And it was unbelievable. I, that was about three years ago. That was, that was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Those are the moments as the opposing coach. It's hard not to lose it. It's like when you're a kid, oh. wrong, but still funny at the same time. The classiest thing was like their captain came over after the game. He's like, I'm so sorry. Like that was just unacceptable. We're, <laughs> we just want to apologize. And I was like, at least they, I mean, they obviously they, you know, they had no control of the coach, but yeah, seeing that was just <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, I don't think I really have anything crazy. Um, I think the only thing that I can think of uh, in practice, this was probably when I was in Pee Wee. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it's nothing like that the coach did bad or whatever, but he took a slap shot from the dot and I had an old player's helmet on and took a slap shot right to the forehead here and the screw popped through the foam and went right into my head oh. and so there was just a crease full of blood everywhere and he's just kind of in shock and so was I as there's blood everywhere so it's like oh crap <laughs> you obviously weren't wearing a mass marble no no <laughs> so it's you know going home then my mom seen the bloody jersey. That's all my dad showed her. I'm still in the car, and she's like freaking out. Oh my gosh, what happened? And I've just got stitches all up my head. So I do have a good static St. Mary story. Now you, you uh, now that my wheels are turning, I'll never forget. So we had a huge rival against uh, Culver Military Academy. So they're based out of uh, Carmel, Indiana. Yep. And I'll never forget. We were in Culver, game one, big rival like you know two top teams in the country going at it and our defenseman Mike Knoll I'll never forget it, big defenseman so during warm-ups you know you ever cross the red line all hell's are gonna break loose well this yep. kid from Culver this was before the refs got out but then the nets were still up against the wall like they were not even they didn't even bring down the nets yet from like the sidewall after the Zamboni cleared the ice I'll never forget this kid from Culver comes into our net and into our zone and he rocked him from behind, just <laughs> cross-checked him. And it just started a melee on the ice. And there's like, Culver was packed. The, the whole arena was full. The referees run on the ice. There's a big brawl before the game. I'm like, this is awesome. This is amazing. I couldn't believe it. That was one of the, the I would say one of the coolest things. But it was definitely one of the <laughs> memories that stick out was the brawl in Culver. That was I'm going to, I'm going to have to reach out to one of my co college teammates who played for Culver and see if he was part of that. <laughs> oh man, that, that was, so that was probably in yeah, 97, 96, somewhere in there, but man, that was, that was awesome. Yeah. So the, the next question, what's your favorite all-time goalie mask? Ooh. Well, I'm a bit, so, so many good ones, though. I'm a huge, uh, I, I, I know Greg Harrison personally, yep. obviously being in the mask industry and um, I, I, I love goalie helmet collections and I know a couple big time collectors in the, in the hockey world that have a bunch of them. And, um, man, I, and I had it at one point I had the Bob Asenza, uh, Greg Harrison model 
mask, the authentic one from 1993, I believe it was. And I sold it. Oh. I caved and I sold it. But as a collector, it was, it was one of my, it was, I wish I had never sold it. But the person I sold it to, I still talk to this day, but yep. it was just iconic. You know, the, the Winnipeg Jets and had like uh, the, the cool design and like this. The story behind it was that he wore it in Detroit as well. So they actually like painted over the helmet. Yeah. And then Greg brought it all the way back down to the original uh, Winnipeg Jet cover, like with the, the fighter jets. And then obviously I know Don Strauss and he makes Armadilla. And that was sort of like one of the coolest helmets that I've ever seen. It's just so iconic and weird looking because it's, you know, it's what Kelly Rudy wore, Van yeah. Brook. Um, yeah, I, I, talked, I talked to Don uh, a while back for one of the episodes and he, he's a great, 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 great fellow to talk to. Absolutely. So and you, you probably see on our Instagram, we like put up goalie masks from yeah. all different eras and pay homage to it. But, I, you know, it's just, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Greg Harrison fan because he was sort of like between, you know, him and, and Gary Warwick. Yeah. Um, who passed away a few years back. Like, those are, those are iconic mask makers, at least in my time in the, you know, 80s and 90s and obviously going to the 2000s. Yep. And they, that's why I have my passion for our goalie helmet and, you know, for, for mask marvels. Yep. I think, I think the 90s masks, you know, any paint job from there was pretty iconic, I guess, you know, <laughs> just because everything nowadays is so detailed. Oh, which, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I think it's some of the things people come up with is pretty cool, but any Mike Vernon mask. Oh, like, you're my Mike favorite Vernon. goalie. Like, Mike Vernon. Any Mike Vernon mask. That's all me. His I think his wing best mask. one was in Detroit. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. actually at Little Caesars Arena. Yeah, I think that one. Because at Little Caesars Arena, they actually have a, uh, which is awesome. I don't know if you've ever seen it on social media posts. Or they actually have a, like a glass case with probably like 10 or 15 masks in there. Oh, from, cool. golly, they, they have to have a, a Sawchuck, Osgood, Vernon. Hashik, just all these unique masks that were just amazing. But, yeah. and obviously with the Ozzy pillow, I mean, that's another iconic mask from, you know, the, the 2000s you know, is Ozzy's, you know, the helmet cage combo. Yeah. It's, um, there's a lot of people that still like the, to rock those in the beer leagues. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they're making a comeback. Right. <laughs> I don't know if they're safe, but yeah. 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 There, there's a few folks out there that are making them with modern materials. Mm-hmm. Um, which in fact, a friend of mine from Devonair goaltending, he actually has one, the oh, nice. carbon, carbon fiber, you know, a little more protective than the one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that <laughs> I started learning to skate with one of those. Yeah. I'll never Golden forget Matt. goalie cage and all. I'll never forget. So uh, Chris Osgood was one of our students at Bandits goalie school. So my business partner, Stan Matwiv, that was his, he worked with Ozzy from the lockout in 05 until he retired. And I'll never forget when during that lockout, he was, he just got traded from St. Louis or was still with St. Louis and maybe coming back to Detroit or I, I don't know how it went back then, or maybe he was going to the Islanders, but he had his, bl- that blue Cooper helmet. And I'll yeah. never forget. I took a slap shot and I hit Ozzy in the head and I big piece of chunk of paint came off the side of his helmet. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, I just hit Ozzy. Yeah. And like, yeah he's a st- I mean, this is, you know, Hopefully a future Hall of Famer, Stanley Cup champion. I'm like, I just hit, him I just hit him in the head. Yeah, you know, I, I he think, just, and I, Ozzy's like, oh man, he, what a beauty. There's only one Chris Osgood, and he is a, he is a, I like to shoot great. Nah, I shoot pretty hard. <laughs> I was, at, I was at probably like the, the, the bottom of the hash marks. Yeah. <laughs> and leave it to the goalie coach to hit the goalie in the head. You know, the, the, the guys that are always telling people to keep the puck down. Buzz in the tower. Uh, yeah. The, although when I was coaching high school, the, there were a few times where I buzzed the goalie's head just to make sure they were paying attention. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite rink to have played at? Oh man. Well, college wise, one of the most uh, unique rinks was at West Point. So I, we played, uh, when I was playing, uh, at SUNY Brockport, we played at West Point and just seeing all the cadets in their uniforms was like mm-hmm. just amazing. I mean, that, that, it's truly special to be on that campus because that's actually where they filmed Wizard of Oz, believe it or not, is that it was actually filmed there because the producer of Wizard of Oz 
was a, he got kicked out of West Point. So that's why the monkeys in Wizard of Oz actually have West Point outfits on. So, but being in that environment was just like the coolest atmosphere. I mean, played at, I played at Mary, so at, Sh- at Shattuck, I played at Mariucci for one of the first games that were actually played at Mariucci. Okay. And I just remember seeing the big M in the stands. I'm like, that is yeah. the coolest thing. I mean, I'm that's a cool ring to skate at, at Mariucci. It was awesome. I would say mine is probably the Polar up in the Sioux. The Polar. Yeah, I think that's what it is. The Polar. Um, is that where the, the, the Greyhound? Greyhounds play out of. Oh, probably. okay, yeah. The, OHL the old. Is that the yeah, old? It's old. Really? Oh, it's yeah. like original. Yeah, it's. I mean, it was the first rink that I actually played at that had seating all the way around. Hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so you have to look it up. It's yeah, it's some, pretty classic. Some, rinks. some of those old barns, even though they're not big, are are pretty fun to play at. The one was at Hobart College. They only had three walls. It was considered an outside rink. <laughs> So there was literally it's snowing and snow's coming in through the side during a game. <laughs> it was pretty, it was cold. Oh, it was way too bad. So the next question is what's your favorite goalie stick that you've used? Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I mean, I was sort of spoiled because I always had a custom one <laughs> when I was younger. So I had the, I actually, the one that's on our, our mannequin was one of my favorite. I had, so growing up, I used to know the Louisville rep. Okay. And I would always get custom Louisville sticks. And I was just enamored by like the all natural wood, like yeah. the natural wood stick and having the, you know, the, the cool colors. And, and that's actually on our, our goalie mannequin. That was actually at the let's play hockey yep. show is the yep. natural wood Louisville. And that was my, uh, one of my, that's one of my favorite sticks. It's just, it's got a good look to it. And it's just a timeless piece, but now they're all composite. I liked when uh, Crawford had the natural wood look composite stick at the uh, Winter yeah. Classic in St. Louis. Yep. It was like, yeah. oh man, they could make a lot of money selling that that style. Yeah. Just classic. Now they're just all matte yeah. colors. And, yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, growing up, I used a lot of Sherwood Sherlight goalie sticks. I mean, those things were super light, but they break, broke like no tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I would say probably. Uh, I like my Bowers now. I don't know why mm. I don't I don't go away from Bower goalie sticks. So. I did have so I'll never forget this when I was at uh, you know I was playing I don't know, say Bantam AAA in the summertime. We were at a tournament in Toronto, and they had uh, I we won the tournament, and myself and my goalie partner got two goalie sticks each of Felix Potvin's. Oh, from, cool! From the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I'll never forget it because they I think they were heating pro 90 Z sticks or heat and sticks that were painted over blue when he was with coho. So yes. you could see like, so where the, the, the paddle and the shaft sort of met together there, there was actually a piece that was just still natural wood. And it looked like it was like the heat and he light stick that was painted over to match, but he would do it that way. So he wouldn't get um, yeah. paint on his blocker hand. Yeah. Oh, funny. And I was like, and you know, at the time, you know, this is back in the you know mid '90s when Felix was, yeah, like, top of his game. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I was just reading, uh, you know, his story in the Vintage Tendy magazine that came mm-hmm. out. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, as a Hawks fan, him and Curtis Joseph, I was not big fans of as a young goaltender. But uh, as I've gotten older, <laughs> I, I, I have an appreciation for the two. <laughs> <laughs> um so what's your favorite youth hockey memory hmm. goodness that was so long ago for you it was <laughs> <laughs> back to those brown leather pad days right honestly it was uh i had the opportunity so there's there's two two memories and i i'm grateful to be so i, I went to two hockey games uh, of all of all the hockey games i've gone to two at least in my opinion, were the most one of probably some of the most iconic in hockey history. So I was at the forum when Patrick Waugh gave up, I think, eleven on Detroit. Yep. And got traded that night or that next morning to Colorado. I was at that game. Oh, cool. And, and at the forum with my dad, and I was also at the game when Steve Eiserman scored on John Casey over the over the shoulder, he yes. crossed over the blue line and ripped it high blocker. I was at that game. 
And I'll never forget those two games. But Joe Lewis, I was up in the suites when he scored. And you, literally, the ceiling was shaking. It was so loud. The, the, the banners hanging down were, like, moving. That's how loud it was in that building. It was, like, the, being that high up in the suite level, it, you look up, and it just was, like, there was, like, a vibration in the building. I was, like, wow. It was just – when they say it was electric, it was electric. It was unbelievable to be at at those two games. Golly. So match yeah. that. Good luck. Yeah, good, good luck. <laughs> yeah, good yeah, luck I, trying to match that. I might have to pass. I don't even – can't even come I just remember in, when I was in Montreal at the Forum when, when Patrick Wall got traded. It was like – it like the whole world stopped in Montreal because it was yep. like front page of the paper. It was like on the news that night. They had like it's like you think someone was like killed like royalty and it was unbelievable yeah I was at that game it was and the, my my father was is good friends with Jock Demers so okay. that's how we ended up getting the tickets to that game obviously Jock Demers wasn't the coach at the time but we were able to get it I think because I think he was at like with Tampa or something and I'm not quite sure where he was at but we ended up getting tickets for that and yeah I'll never forget that game and when he rate like Sergey Fedorov fired the puck in from center ice and he raised his hands and the form went crazy because he that was like the first puck he stopped pretty much all night. Yep. Yeah, I I'm old enough to remember that game quite well. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, so the the next question is one that makes people uh laugh and then try and change names of the story. What's the best chirp you've heard on the ice, off the ice, directed at you, not directed at you, just I best chirp? <laughs> probably can't say <laughs> there's a there's a there's a couple good ones i don't have anything crazy everything was just short jokes to me oh so. sure yeah we're both the same no. size so no. i i think the i mean i've been in a game where you know there's like i've, I've been coaching in a game where one of our players will you know the play will be going on and he'll sneak behind the goalie and grab his water bottle and take a drink out of his water bottle and then put it back down and skate up the ice. And the goalie just, you know, he chases him up to the top of the circle. It's good. <laughs> yeah, obviously you're disrespecting the goalie by drinking uh -huh. out of his water bottle. Yeah. Yep. But chirp wise, yeah, there's a couple that I probably can't say on this podcast. I've been in some, I've been in some pretty heated uh, hockey games and hockey environments over my, t my hockey career. Yeah. I was never one to talk. Really? Really? No, uh, I was, I, just... I was that guy. I was, <laughs> you were that guy. I had my defensemen that were always sticking up for me. I wasn't one to talk, but I always seemed to have the teammates that did like to talk. Yeah, the yeah. stuff in there. <laughs> I was yeah. the guy that I used my trouble. stick. Yeah, yeah that's what I let my stick do the yeah. talking. Yeah, I, I remember uh, one of the goalie clinics I went to when I was just a young goaltender. We had two refs that would uh, come out and shoot, and they, they were really good at showing us what we could do with our stick to make <laughs> everything look like an accent, like just a little nudge at the bottom of the skates and – you know, little things like that. It, so uh, I, I got pretty good with the stick. Yeah. Um, never got called for any of it either. <laughs> um, so what is the worst post-game beer you've had? Oh, that is all you. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Zach's not a big drinker. I have to get him to drink every, uh, every once in a while. Mm -hmm. The worst one? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I don't know. I'm a, like, I, I would probably never order it if I didn't know it or didn't like, wouldn't like it. Keystone. Well, probably like hams or key. No, uh, Genesee light when in New York. Oof. Yeah. So, that was not good. My worst post was probably a bad one. But when you're in college, that's all you can really do is you got to hang in beer. there and just get cheap beer. But I, I, I know talking about cheap beer, I love, you know, Pabst Blue Ribbon is PBR is yep. incredible. Still love it to this day. For me, the worst post game beer is just anything warm. When when the guy who uh, decides to bring it forgets that he wanted to bring it and stops at the uh, liquor store on the way to the game, and rather <laughs> than take the extra you know twenty feet to go to the cooler and get something cold, he just grabs what's ever yeah, by the like register the and it's like, yeah, it's like it's the one that's like right by the register. It's just yeah. It's like, come on, man. It doesn't matter how good of quality beer it is. It's still warm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that, that, is, that's what it is for me. Uh, when you tape your sick, do you go heel to toe or toe to heel? Oh, definitely, uh, heel to toe, heel to toe. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, I think that is how it is for most goalies, but I've talked to a few who are uh, what I'll say backwards and go toe to heel. Really? I don't, I don't know if I even would. Even on the player stick, I would. Even my player yeah. stick, I would do that, yeah? I yeah. don't know, it seems odd. Yeah, um, there's a few of them out there. Um, we won't hold it again, so it's kind of like the nope. uh, the left-handed goalie, you know. We're, we're not going to right. Yeah, the full rights. I, I coached one and um, I picked on him every day for it, telling him he was yeah, broke. They, 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 like, they just get in the shooter's mind. It's like holding the stick in their own hand. They didn't, yeah. The shooter will look at an opposite hand goalie and be like, what do I do here? Whenever he would get beat um, uh, glove side, I'd tell him it's because he was holding it on the wrong side. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the wrong side. That should be. That's the you're you're not doing it the right way. Right? Yeah, uh, oh. yeah. He he had a good sense of humor. In fact, uh, not. It's hard to believe that kid I coached when he was in high school is now in his thirties. But it's funny he he now subs for me when I can't make my games. <laughs> uh, when you play, what's what's your favorite number to wear and why? Oh, thirty. Well, I started off wearing thirty four. John Van Beesbro, being from uh, you know Detroit. And that was actually the first game I ever saw was in Maple Leaf Garden, believe it or not. It was Toronto versus the New York Rangers. This is back in like mid 80s. And John Van Beesbrook was facing off against Alan Bester. I'll never forget that. And I was like, just, I still have the puck actually. It's right down there. I still have the puck. I've I've always kept the puck from that uh, that game. Yep. Yeah, but that was it. John Van Beesbrook, 34. And when did you change 30? I think I was just given 30 in college. I don't think they even had those numbers. I mean, I probably didn't go that high. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, 29. Mike Vernon. Mike Vernon. Mike Vernon. He was. Or Felix Podman. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But... Ver- Vernon was one of those guys, even when he played for the Wings, I had to cheer for him. Uh, there's just something about him. I, I like yeah, He's got a good personality. He's great personality. He's fun to watch. Yep. So the, the last question, what advice do you have for young goaltenders? Well, the one thing that we teach at our, our goalie school at Bandits is uh, HAP. So have a purpose. So that was like, there's a lot. So we work with uh, Thatcher Demko, you know, he plays for the mm-hmm. Vancouver Canucks. And if you see any of his equipment, HAP is actually on his yep. equipment. Um, and it's actually like embroidered into the, into the gear. And that's, there's, there's a long story behind it, but, that's the advice I, 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 we, I and our staff give to all of our kids at our goalie school is, is have a purpose. Like, don't ever waste a second of your time on or off ice. You know, it's, it's, there's always time to get better. Yep. And especially the way that with the, the means of, you know, video now and, you know, virtual reality training, it's just endless now. It's, it's incredible how you, you don't even need to go to an ice rink anymore to yep. you know, I, hand-eye I, coordination and it's unbelievable. I think about that often. If I were a young goaltender today, how much better would I be? Oof. Just because it's of the, the appetite I had back in the mid nineties, pre internet and everything else. Now all of the tools kids have, you know, oh, it's incredible. What, what would I have absorbed and how would that have impacted my game? From video and stats to, I mean, even just reading articles online. I mean, I mean yeah. when I played, there wasn't even the internet. So yeah. I mean, yeah it's just, it's just crazy it's, it's it's truly come a long way and yeah like goalie coaching like i love doing it and because i never had a goalie coach growing up so i was all self-taught you know yep. you now i'd go to goalie school once in a great while if my parents had the money you know but i mean hockey's already expensive in itself and then being a goalie on top of that so um but it's just having fun Mm-hmm. you know like kids I lose the sight of that like yes they want to get better they want to uh win games you know it's win 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 but it's like you gotta have fun with it though too otherwise you'll lose your drive for it yep you know I I think if there's a way to somehow instill the beer league mentality of just enjoy being out there but still have that drive to be better um yep. it would go a long way with a lot of kids and we probably retain a lot more of them as they move on in the ranks too. Yep, absolutely. Um, so where can folks find you guys online if they want to uh, follow along, see, see when the new 
series comes out and uh, decide which piece they're going to buy? Yes, we got our, our website is secondstringleather.com and then uh, social media and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, just Second String Leather Company. Yeah, and, and I'll be sure to get links to all of those in the show notes uh, yeah. when this comes out. Um, as I said, we're, we're recording on St. Patrick's Day, but th- this won't go live for a little bit after, but th- that's all right. Uh, you know, we, we can still celebrate the luck of the Irish year round. So Absolutely. That, that's all right. Um, well, Joe, Zach, I appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to uh, sit down and talk to me and, you know, share some stories about the, the, the story behind the wallets. You know, it's, it's fun that e- each piece has a story of their own, but it's like, how, how did we get to making the wallets? You know, where, where did that 2 a.m. idea come from? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes. Well, I- again, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, uh, it's appreciate been fun it. chatting, and hopefully we get to see each other next year at the Let's Play Hockey Expo. Absolutely. We'll be looking for you. We'll be there. Yeah. That was an awesome conversation with Joe and Zach. If you've been considering getting a wallet from Second String Leather Company, but aren't sure about the prices, let me tell you, it's worth it. I wouldn't have two of them if it wasn't. The quality of these products is top notch. They also have their next collection coming out, so keep your eyes peeled for some awesome pieces. I've seen a few already, and they're pretty cool. You can find Second String Leather Company on the web at secondstringleather.com. You can find them on Instagram and Facebook at Second String Leather Company, all one word, no spaces, and on Twitter at Second String LC no spaces. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube simply by searching for Washed Up Goalie. Visit washedupgoalie.com for some great hockey-related content, my beer league hockey video highlights when I'm able to skate during this pandemic, and of course, all podcast episodes. If you want some Washed Up Goalie or Tendy Talk apparel, be sure to visit my Threadless shop by clicking the merchandise link on my website. I just revamped the shop and added some items as well as some goalie silhouette inspired pieces. If you like this podcast, go listen to the BLPA Big Show. It's the OG BLPA Podcast Network show. The BLPA Big Show is a couple of beer league hockey players chatting about their beer league hockey exploits and at times hot topics in the world of hockey. The show is hosted by Nick Jones and Trish Dangles with other co-hosts filling in from time to time. Right now, Nick and the BLPA are in the thick of the Dex tournament season, so current shows are bound to talk about the latest tournaments that are being held pretty much all across the Midwest right now. Uh, I'm being a little liberal when I say Midwest because they're going as far as Columbus, uh, Ohio. They, they've been in Omaha and whatnot, so give them a listen. I need to thank the band The Zambonis for allowing me to use their music on my podcast. You can download their music on iTunes or listen wherever you stream music from. I'm also working on lining up other goalies to talk to. I have a few fun ones lined up, but I'm always looking for more. If you're a goalie or have connections to a goalie who I should talk to, shoot me an email at washedupgoalie39 at gmail.com or send me a DM on social media. Let's not forget, if you are a brand who wants to sponsor the show, be sure to reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk. And finally, if you like what you hear, Be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment on the podcast platform you're listening on. It's a quick action on your part that helps others find Tendy Talk. Until next time, keep your stick on the ice and your body square to the puck.
Takes a lot of nerve to just get into the rink. Intuition and brains.